Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. So a lot of people have been trying Linux lately, and if you saw one of my recent videos, you'll see that I'm not a big fan of Linux desktops. But I read your comments and I saw that a lot of people wanted me to give it a chance. So what I've done is for the last two weeks, I've been using desktop Linux as my primary computer, and I'm going to share my thoughts about that. Okay, so thing number one, the user experience. Uh, the user experience on desktop Linux is very polarizing. Or rather, it's very bipolar. It's either excellent and everything works perfectly, or you spend hours troubleshooting trying to figure out why something doesn't work right. Uh, and there's not a lot of in-between. It's either really great and awesome, or it's really painful and difficult to use. So the user experience is kind of all over the place, uh, but I do want to highlight some of the great things about the user experience. So this is an Ubuntu virtual machine, and I just want to point out a couple things about the user interface and the user experience. So first of all, and this isn't the case for every Linux desktop, I'm just talking about Ubuntu here, uh, which Ubuntu is the one that I've been using for the last couple weeks, so we're going to focus on that. Uh, however, I do want to point out something that you don't see here. See, looking around the interface? Guess what? You know, there's something missing. What's not here? Uh, well, that would be ads. <laughs> there's no ads. There's no... it's not trying to upsell you on stuff. And that's really one of the biggest differences with desktop Linux, and that is that it is made for the person who's using it, as opposed to Mac OS and Windows, which are made to serve Apple and Microsoft's best interests. So by using Linux, you're getting something that's designed for you to actually use. You know, that's the good part of the user experience. It, it all kind of goes downhill, though. As soon as you want to do something that the publisher of the desktop didn't really intend for you to do, it gets very complicated very fast. Uh, for example, doing things like uh, audio and video work, uh, working with Pulse Audio or Pipewire to kind of connect these different audio components, that is such a huge pain in the butt. And also, there's just stuff missing on desktop Linux. There's no good digital audio workstations. For example, on macOS you have Logic Pro and GarageBand, both very capable programs. On Linux you really don't have any native uh, music production software that works very well, and that also kind of bleeds over into video editing. Uh, so, you know, of course you have DaVinci Resolve, uh, but that is such a pain in the ass to get working on Linux. And trust me, because I I got it working, it was not easy. And, you know, a lot of this stuff kind of boils down to what hardware you have. Uh, depending on what hardware is in your machine, you might have a different experience than what I did. Uh, but I've never had an easy time getting DaVinci Resolve working on Linux. And Caden Live is okay. It's kind of like iMovie. It's, it's not really feature-rich. It doesn't have everything you might need. Uh, so that's why I'm really not focusing too much on that offering. So yeah, that's what the user experience is all about. Uh, what about getting shit done? What about productivity? Uh, so, again, this is where things all kind of fall apart. Because if you're doing work in isolation, then Linux is perfectly adequate. You know, you've got a good, you've got a good document editor, you've got a good spreadsheet editor, got good slideshow creator, all of this is LibreOffice, it's a very it's very fully featured functional desktop productivity suite, uh, but the where things kind of go off the rails as soon as you start collaborating. So as soon as you want to have multiple people with access to a document, the ability to edit it in real time and collaborate that way, you know, the way that most people are used to collaborating now, uh, you don't, it doesn't really work. Uh, so if you're just doing things in isolation, then Linux is a really good option. But as soon as you have to collaborate with other people, other systems, uh, then the compatibility issues start rearing their head. And uh, another thing about the Linux desktop is that it defaults to local only. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, there's no cloud storage, uh, so you, you can connect stuff like your Google Drive to it. 
but by default there is no cloud storage. Uh, there is no collaboration suite. If you want to collaborate on Linux, then you're going to have to spin up a Nextcloud server and use that across all of your various devices, and good luck getting other people to use that. Uh, it's Look, it's really capable, and it's a really good solution, Nextcloud, uh, but there's no way that you can convince all of the people you need to collaborate with to just use that. It's just not going to happen. So when it comes to productivity, again, if you're working in isolation, you're all set. But as soon as you need to collaborate with other people, other systems, then you are up a creek without a paddle. All right, so let's talk about gaming, right? So it's not all bad news here. Uh, I've had a lot of success running games on desktop Linux. Uh, now, to be fair, most of the games I play are from the late 90s to early 2000s. So there's been a couple decades for us to figure out how to get those running. Uh, but the experience was really smooth, especially with Proton via Steam, uh, which is just an amazing system. And if you want to play games on Linux, you know, you can, you can play most of the games you want to, and they mostly work very well. All right, number four, coding. Uh, so Linux is the best operating system for coding, uh, hands down. It's, it's just excellent, you know. Everything works natively, all the programming languages install very easily, compilers, IDEs, you have tons of options, and all of this stuff works really well. And that really is due to the fact that Linux was made by developers, mostly for developers. <laughs> uh, and what I mean by that is that the developers have paid a lot of attention to the development experience on the platform. And that has paid off in dividends because you'll meet a lot of developers who prefer to do all of their work on a desktop Linux system because they have that native support for everything that they need. So when it comes to coding, desktop Linux is definitely the way to go. All right, and the last one, the last point that I have to make is a controversial one. Security. Uh, desktop Linux is not as secure as people say. <laughs> so this is something that's probably going to be pretty controversial, but desktop Linux is not secure. Uh, what, why do I say that? Well, obviously there are very few viruses that are written to run on Linux, and there are very few people targeting desktop Linux with viruses, and so you do have some security through obscurity here. However, I've written a few pieces of Linux malware, I've analyzed a few pieces of Linux malware, and they don't have to do anything to hide. Like, the Linux systems just let this shit run. There's nothing stopping it. And of course, you know, you've got SE Linux, you've got ACLs, you've got all these tapestry pieces that fit together to kind of build a somewhat secure system. But at the end of the day, uh, if you use modern attack techniques, you can absolutely compromise a Linux system. And a lot of that comes down to social engineering. There is little to no protection against social engineering built into Linux. If you copy and paste a random script off the internet, there's nothing to stop it from doing malicious stuff. And that's because there's no antivirus, there's no anti-malware uh, to speak of. Now, you do have options where you can, like, install Microsoft Defender, which I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but on all of my Linux servers, uh, I'm using Microsoft Defender, and that's because most of my Linux servers are exposed to the public internet, and obviously that's a hostile network, and so I needed something that would catch uh, an attempted virus or anything like that, and so you, you do have these options that you can add on top of it. But, if I trick you into running a command that looks innocuous, and you paste that into your Linux desktop, I can absolutely get remote access and own that whole system, and you will never know that it's happening. So, desktop Linux, not as secure as people say. And that's because the real threats, stuff like social engineering, there's nothing on Linux to catch that and prevent it from happening. So, will I continue to use Linux? Oh, absolutely. All of my servers run Linux. 
you know, Linux on the server just makes perfect sense. Like, it's, it's like peanut butter and jelly. It just fits together perfectly. So Linux absolutely has a place in running all of my infrastructure. Linux is the backbone of my computer environment, and I couldn't do what I do without it. That being said, uh, Linux desktops, after I've lived on one for a couple weeks, I do have to say I'm probably not going to stick with it. Uh, it's better than Windows, it's no doubt about that, it is superior to Windows in every respect. Uh, but I need to be able to collaborate with other people. I need to be able to know that if I copy and paste a malicious script, something might catch it. I'm not exactly just copying random scripts off the internet and running them, uh, but a lot of people are. And so that is why I'm probably not going to use desktop Linux. I do have a laptop uh, that can run either Windows or Linux. I am going to keep it on Linux, uh, but I'm not really going to be using that very often. So that, those are my thoughts on the two-week Linux challenge I've embarked on. If you want to see me do a longer amount of time or a different challenge with a different distro, leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to take a look. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Or if you don't want to see more videos from me, you can hit the little thumbs up icon if you liked this one in particular. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. I appreciate you coming by and checking out my channel. And I hope to make more videos that you enjoy in the future. So with that said, I'll catch you next time. Bye.